I'm Hewan Hook, and this is The Real Review. The wine we're tasting now is Penfolds Grange, 2016 vintage, from South Australia. So Penfolds Grange, what can we say about Grange that hasn't been said before? Um, it is Australia's most famous wine and its most collectible wine. It's, uh, it sits up at the top of Langton's classification almost in a class of its own because it is a great collectible and it lasts for a very long time. Part of what makes a great collectible wine is of course longevity and Grange in great vintages will last for 50 years without a problem. And during that time, it can be bought and sold many times and the price tends to go up and up and up. And the wine tends to become more and more complex and more and more mellow. And theoretically, at least, uh, improves indefinitely with aging up until the end of its life. And I've tasted wines that have been 50 years old and they've been splendid, absolutely splendid. So Grange, um, it has an unbroken line of 69 vintages stretching back to 1951. I've included the latest vintage uh, just for fun. But 1951 was the first and Max Schubert, the famous winemaker, who was Penfold's chief winemaker at the time, had been sent over to Europe to go to Spain and study sherry making, would you believe? Because sherry was the preferred drink, uh, preferred wine of Australians at the time. They didn't drink much red wine at all. But he loved red wine himself and he dropped in at Bordeaux on the way down to Spain and he met some people in Bordeaux who introduced him to some of the great wines of Bordeaux which had been aged and were gorgeous drinking at the time and he just fell in love with them and said, when I get home, yes, I'll make some good sherry but I'm going to try and make a red wine that will last for a long, long time and be as good as these great wines of Bordeaux. There was very little Cabernet in Australia at the time but there was plenty of Shiraz. So he didn't use Cabernet, he used Shiraz. And the rest is history. He began this wine in 1951. It was called Grange only after a couple of vintages had been made. Um, it uh, received uh, almost universal uh, um, mockery when it, was re when it was first released because it was too young. People said, this is a, this is a wine that no one would ever want to drink. It's terrible. And so the head of uh, the Penfolds board told him to stop making it. And from 1957 to 1959, Max Schubert continued making Grange in secret. And he hid them in the underground cellars, and those were known as the hidden Granges. But then enough time passed, people realised that with age, the wine developed into something fantastic, and they started making it again, or told him to start making it again. And its history began from then. Um, Max almost got the sack because he disobeyed a board instruction, of course, and continued making the wine. But he survived, and he went on to make some of the greatest wines we've ever seen. Um, Grange is never a single vineyard wine, or even a single region wine. It's always a blend of many vineyards and many regions, or several regions. But they're always from South Australia. It's never from another state. Um, this 2016 is composed of grapes from the Barossa Valley, McLaren Vale, Clare Valley and McGill, which is in the Adelaide foothills where the, uh, the original Penfolds winery is, uh, McGill Estate. Uh, the core of the wine is always Barossa Valley and it's always the Kalimna Vineyard, which is the Penfolds Vineyard in the north of the Barossa. The oldest Kalimna vines go back to well over 100 years old. It's a famous vineyard and it's the core of Grange. Every year there's a tiny component of Cabernet in it as well. This year, 3% of Cabernet in this wine. Max Schubert always thought a bit of Cabernet improved it somehow. This wine would have been made by the team which is headed by Peter Gago, who is the, uh, the chief winemaker of Penfolds today and has a, does a fantastic job, I think, of, of what he does. $950 for the current release. That's a lot of money. Um, but it's cheap compared to a first growth Bordeaux, I suppose. Let's have a look at it. The colour is so dark. It is very dark. It's almost impenetrable. It's very hard to see through that unless you have a strong light. But it's a bright colour. It's a good colour. Lots of purple in the, in the rim, even though it's now, you know, 
four and a half years old. The wine has a lot of density to it. And you can tell that just by swirling it in the glass. It really has some viscosity. It, uh, it sticks to the walls of the glass and stains the glass ever so slightly purple. And when you smell it, before I talk about the bouquet, I'll mention that I double decanted this bottle. Double decanting is when you pull the cork, you pour the wine into a jug or a decanter, and then you pour it from the decanter back into the bottle, which you've rinsed if it's got any sediment in it. That's called double decanting. That's what Max Schubert always used to do. I saw him do it many times. He swore by it. He always said that Grange especially needs a bit of air. Grange needs more air than most wines. So that's what I've done today. I did it about two hours ago. And um, that will help to open up the bouquet and make the obvious oakiness of the wine a little bit more subdued, hopefully. Let's have a taste. And the aroma is absolutely classic Grange. It is powerful, first of all, complex, secondly, and distinctive. And there is this tremendous coffee, mocha, dark chocolate character which comes out of that glass, which is just so Grange. There's dark fruits, black fruits, blackberries, mulberries, and so on. But there's also um, some spice and there is licorice. There is that spectrum of spicy licorice, star anise, those sorts of aromas are very typical. And it's very, very Aussie, this wine. It's a, such a, you, would, you wouldn't find like a wine like that in the Rhone Valley in France where Shiraz comes from. No way. And that, that is just an explosion of flavour. You almost have to shut up and think and stop talking for a minute because that just commands your attention, that wine. It just says, shut up and listen to me for a minute. I'm telling you something. Wow. Concentration of flavour. Uh, bitter dark chocolate, dried fruit, fruit cake. There's the ironstone and graphite mineral characters that you get out of Barossa. Shiraz are in there as well. The tannins. I remember when Granger's long time ago, when I first started out in wine 35 years ago, Young Grange was a formidable wine. It was tannic, it was, you know, really hard on the palate, astringent quite often, and very oaky. Um, this wine is approachable. I think what Peter Gago has done in his time, and John Duval started the process before him, is that they have made wines Granges, which are more approachable at a younger age and uh, don't need to be kept for a long, long time before they're fantastic to drink. You can even drink it straight away. And uh, as I say earlier, give it lots of air, decant it, give it several hours in a decanter and you'll find that softens it a little bit as well. But if you want to get the full payoff, maybe you should wait a few years. How do we rate this wine? Well, we scored at 97 and um, that's a young wine score. I suspect that in a few years we come back to that wine and we'll get more than that because that really is a great vintage of Grange. That is a fantastic wine, uh, but it's a young wine with its future ahead of it. That was rated number eight out of 527 Shirazes from South Australia in that vintage, 2016. Uh, we've said drink it from 2023 and uh, three years hence until 2050 when it's going to be what 36 years old conservative we're always a bit conservative with these drinking guidelines but if you look after that wine it will last for 50 years no problem 2016 is a great vintage of Grange there's no two ways about it I expect that wine will be ranking with the great uh, the great vintages which are in my opinion 71 83 86 and there are many, many, and 96, there are many, many more great vintages, 90 and 91. If you go way back, there's 62, there's 55. Uh, I could talk for a long time about the great vintages of Grange. Food. If you were being bold and drinking this wine tonight, and I intend to drink some of it tonight, what would you have with it? Uh, Peter Gago has been very uh, democratic and he's just said the Penfolds winemakers have put their heads together and their suggestion here is beef or venison. Uh, the perfect match would be Wagyu, Wagyu beef of a 9 plus rating. Um, okay, that means 
about as rich as this beef gets, I think. Uh, rich wines need rich food, and this is a rich wine. So, enjoy.